Hi, my lovely friends. It's Marta here. I'm sorry if my voice sounds off, but I do have a little bit throat infection and I'll try my best to uh, record this video as smoothly as possible. Here uh, I am sharing with you the brand new collection uh, called Deep Blue, which is just launched from uh, Texturist the other day. And I wanted to show you the card and idea I have for playing with the stencil. Uh, for using the stencil like that whenever you have a lot of the open spaces and the stencil is very delicate and you are just uh, you know unsure whether it's going to be moving the best idea is to use some masking tape and tape it from the back side uh, for coloring my image through the stencil i am taking a piece of the sponge and i am just dabbing it from the top i am not uh, trying to smear the uh, ink because i am just scared that i don't want those delicate parts uh, parts to move on uh, my idea for today card was actually to use the technique which is called joseph coat uh, and this technique uh, is either for using a stamping but you can also use it with the stenciling like that all you have to do you have to protect the color spaces with the um, clear embossing powder and once you do so then you color the rest of the remaining paper in black and this way this makes your color pop even more and create this nice vivid look however i've made the basic mistake before I start coloring my paper, I should actually use anti-static tool. This is a very important, especially for the Joseph coat technique, because once you sprinkle the embossing powder all over and you will have some uh, static to the paper, you will end up with having some pieces of the embossing powder lying outside the um, the pattern so then once you will try to color it with the black ink those pieces will pop up white uh, so i had to change the plan but i hope you're still gonna enjoy the effect so what i did here i did the distress oxide ink i used the um, salty ocean and the green one i can't remember the color but i will put them uh, down and then i add a little bit of the uh, easing aladine spray just for additional shininess and then i use the same salty ocean uh, no i use the slightly darker ink to spray on top of it and here is the trick for adding the adhesive rather than going over the um, the image with the embossing ink i use temporary adhesive this is as in spray there is lots of companies who produce those uh, sticky adhesive and i just quickly spray it through the stencil this way it saved me a ton of time and i didn't have to go over the design back again with the embossing ink pad and trying to make sure that the embossing ink, ink will go to every single nook and cranny so if you would like to use the embossing through your stencil i really recommend you to buy yourself a bottle of those uh, repositional at uh, to go, but just make sure this is the repositionable adhesive this is the one which you can very easily uh, wash off from your stencil with a little bit of the warm water and uh, the stencil it's not gonna be sticky anymore and that way you will have the enough of the sticky surface to grab your embossing ink and here you will see in a second how this uh, background beautifully turned out i really really love it however because i had a couple of bits where i had this clear embossing lying in between um on those white areas and they they were too, way too fiddly to just trying to clean it up with all with the brush i've decided to skip the joseph technique and instead of that i'm doing this uh, uh, squishing technique to add a little bit of the color to the right side of this uh, uh, to this white 
area around the, the stencil image. I'm also adding a couple of the splatters and then I am taking off the excess uh, of this ink uh, from the paper using my kitchen towel. And this is gonna be my background. I'm actually quite happy that um, it turned out this way because it's gonna be looking nice. You're gonna see it on the end falls. And now, I'm gonna need some uh, focal point and for that I will use this big uh, stamp set with the anchor. However, I'm not going to be using the entire stamp image, but I want to fussy cut my anchor. Uh, nevertheless, I'm using the embossing ink because I want my anchor to have this nice grooves and, and texture, so for that I've pick up this rose gold uh, embossing powder I have from Ranger and I like it because it's kind of a it's not 100% rose gold is actually a mixture in between the the gold and brown uh, color it's very very interesting shade and whenever I'm creating those wooden elements I'm always reaching that one because I think it's just looking fabulous and then I took my little snippets uh, scissors and I'm fussy cutting and as you can see here on this image it the anchor is bound with the rope um, it's loop all around the anchor however uh, at first I thought I'm gonna cut it but then I thought uh, you know what I'm just gonna cut it off and then I will replace it with the piece of the of the natural rope uh, later on so that will give me even more uh, dimension I've made sure I fussy cut everything including this little loop on the on the top part and then I am adding the brown inks just to color uh, this piece even more and give it this nice rich wood effect uh, so once I'm happy with the coloring, I add a little bit of the distress ink and then I've found a couple times the archival ink uh, just because I needed something to be a little bit more darker. And here you can see how this anchor it's turned out. I think it's looking really, really great and I just love it. Uh, for my uh, this front panel, I needed to trim it a little bit just so it will fit my uh, six by six card, uh, which I'm gonna be using today. This is a ready-made card base uh, I'm buying from the craft stash. I'll give you the link uh, down below as well. And once I cut the uh, my my piece to to uh, match my card, I am going over the edges with the scissors just to give it uh, a little bit more distressed look and then I am coloring it very very uh, gently with this brush cordoy distress oxide ink and I'm trying just to stay as close as the edges as possible I'm not you know blending the color towards the center and then the final thing which I really really like to do is to take this uh, mini archival ink or any like you could take a vintage photo ink or, or some some dark uh, dark color uh, ev even from the distress range as well uh, but it's just adding the touch of the very brown dark brown color ink just to the edge that gives you this kind of like a burn paper effect uh, which i really really like now i've decided to use the same uh, embossing powder to uh, stamp my sentiment and the sentiment is coming from the same stamp set and it says the a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor and i think this is a brilliant and very uh, much encouraging message which will be great not only for like a birthday card for like a fisherman or someone who's working in a in a um, marine uh, but uh, it will be great for anyone who ever had to go through some hardships of life or had to go through something this is just to encourage everyone to say like uh, whatever you been gone through this will make you you know tougher this will definitely help you to you know spread your wings so i truly like this sentiment and i do find it that i may use it more than once in many of of the creation because i'm always up for anything which is encouraging and anything which is, has this positive vibe and now i've decided i'm gonna be dress up the sentiment in a similar way as my front panel i just slightly go over the edges distress them and then add a little bit of the ink 
and then to the very very edge of the uh, sentiment i will add that dark brown ink now i am gonna be playing a little bit with one of my favorite uh, die set and I really like this uh, porthole uh, die, which has uh, lots of the elements. It's actually to create this underwater scenery when you will be looking like through the submarine uh, porthole window. And then there's tons of elements. But the one I really, really like is this big... Uh, plate here with all those uh, like uh, corals and different like a uh, uh, you know sea plants uh, i don't know the names of them so uh, like a seaweeds and and the coral elements and these are just brilliant and these will be great not only for uh, this type of distress mixed media vibe creation but for so many more you can actually color them with some bright colorful papers and use them for the children uh, undersea um, team card or uh, so many different different uh, things you can do with these and i love that they are all joined in one plate which is very easy to cut you just put one piece of the die on a piece of paper you don't have to worry about like you know um, taping tons of other elements you don't have to worry about that they all gonna get lo lost somewhere so i really appreciate that now i'm grabbing my finger dabbers a mixture of different inks uh, i'm using the combination in between distress inks and uh, regular like distress oxide ink and regular distress inks and i do that because uh, i don't have as many colors i don't have the full collection in each i do actually have a lot of the small those uh, one inch cube in the distress oxide ink uh, collection but for the oxide inks um I don't have many of them. I think I've got like a 12, maybe 15 colors. Uh, so I'm still, you know, trying to buy new and, and you know, uh, fill my collection. But whenever I need, a, a, I feel I need another color, I'm just grabbing any other inks and that's just working fine. Now, here is this um, twisted cord, which is a piece of the upholster. Usually these are for finishing of the curtains or things like that. So if you go to any like a material sewing store you will be able to buy these and i've decided to loop mine uh, to follow the pattern from the stamp set as you can see on the stamp set it had the uh, rope uh, you know uh, white uh, around the anchor and this is what i'm gonna do as well but first i want to adhere my panel to the front card and because it had a lot of moisture and i didn't use the um, stronger paper uh, i wanted to straighten it out so for that i add this uh, large amount of the foam tape and this way it will just adhere it very very flat and create this nice uh, a little bit dimensional look but it will also help me to keep the paper straight now i have this piece of the cheesecloth which i am trying to um, you know ruffle a little bit to resemble the fishnet and this is gonna be my a little bit like a underwater scenery when this like a anchor which has broken chain or line has felt down to the to the ground and it's just lying under this um on the you know on the under the sea with all this uh, um weeds and and coral uh, surrounding it so i think it's gonna be looking nice and uh, one thing to remember when you use those cords whenever you cut a piece of it make sure you uh, protect the edges um in with the bit of the hot glue because these one uh, they just um unwind very very quickly so even though they are nicely twisted the second you cut a piece of it they just start untwisting so uh, whenever i do use a piece as soon as i will cut it i am just adding a touch of the glue till the end and make sure it's stayed in this nice twisted uh, you know part and now i'm just following the design from the stamp set and i just love it i absolutely love it how much dimensional because of this piece of a rope it become and here i am just trying to work on my composition i am putting my focal point uh, on the card just so i know where about i should put my elements so they're not gonna be everything will be looking nice 
and once i'm happy with the placement i am adding a piece of the hot glue just uh, just to help me to adhere those those elements i'm not going to use them all i actually cut more than i needed uh, but this is something i always like to do because i don't know how many elements i'm gonna need some of them uh, you know, you, you, you may think like, oh, uh, I'm going to add one or two and then you may need more. So for that, I always like to prepare more because if I at the end of my work, I would think like, oh, I need one or two more that will, you know, make it much more work to take the dies out back again, to cut it, to color. So it's always better to, you know, um, cut one or two more and then you can store all of these in little poly pockets and once you you know you do a few nautical cards with some fish with some you know stars or things like that and you have leftover pieces then you will have something ready to put on another card and so this is how i work i always you know collect those bits and from time to time i'm just grabbing them and i have um, enough to make even more than one card out from these leftovers so um, I, once i've placed everything i add the sentiment uh, with the with the help of the hot glue and i just love it then I am adding this little jellyfish to the corner of my card and I will finish my card by adding those uh, water droplets which will resemble that uh, underwater um, oxygen bubbles. Uh, so I really really like that and once I will add these my card will be basically ready. In a second I will show you the close-up look on this card as well as the other one which I've created as my inspiration as a part of design team for for, uh, this new texture collection so i hope you will enjoy it all the links to the new collection and everything you will find down below in the description area and thank you so very much everyone if you watch it up till this point please say hi please give a like and don't forget to leave a comment this is a huge help to grow uh, for my youtube channel and of course subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more i will see you all on my live classes which will be coming this saturday at 6 p.m so thank you so much for watching and don't forget to share the video with your friends uh, to let them know uh, that this is the card you can create if they follow my uh, my tutorial and thank you once again stay blessed my friends and bye bye have a wonderful weekend and i'll see you on a saturday on the live classes bye bye